Today, I'm going to be going through a problem from TBO's problem solving booklet. This has a bunch of problems, well, 151 to be precise, of mathematics problems which are designed to help students prepare for their undergraduate mathematics interviews. And there are lots of Oxford and Cambridge math interviews coming up uh, around the corner. And in fact, I've done a few mock interviews on the problem. And as an Oxford graduate, it's something I guess that holds a bit of sentimental value for me. So let me know if you enjoy this video. Um, I'll be keen to make some more problems based off of the problems in this booklet. They seem kind of interesting, uh, but we'll dive in with this problem. If three positive real numbers, A, B, and C, satisfy the following equations, show that at least one of them must be one and hence deduce all solutions. So three positive numbers and their product is one, their sum is three, as is the sum of the reciprocals of those numbers. Um, now, you could perhaps spot a pretty obvious solution to this system of equations. Um, and, you know, you could maybe make a comment about that and then maybe argue that that could be the only one. Or maybe there are other ones as well. But that's something we have to consider. Either there are more solutions or there are none other. I'm going to show you two different ways to solve this problem. The first way is a way that maybe is screaming out to you if you've done a lot of competition maths before. And that's to use the AMGM inequality. And this just says that the arithmetic mean of a set of positive numbers is always going to be bigger than or equal to the geometric mean of uh, uh, the same set of positive numbers. So the AM is greater than or equal to the GM for positive numbers. And in fact, furthermore, we can say that the AM equals the GM, i.e. the equality holds, if and only if those numbers are the same. OK, so what? how do we use this here? Well, let's just use A, B and C, which are positive numbers. Let's look at what their arithmetic mean is. That's just A plus B plus C divided by 3. But A plus B plus C is 3 divided by 3 is 1. What about the geometric mean? Well, that's going to be the cube root of A, B, C. And A, B, C conveniently is 1. So this is the cube root of 1, which is 1. And now notice that the AM equals the GM. And so therefore, these three numbers, A, B, and C, have to be the same, according to the AMGM inequality. So A equals B equals C. And then you can just sub that into here and see that they all must therefore be one. And that kind of solves our problem. We prove that the only solution to this is the trivial solution, namely A equals B equals C equals one. And we didn't even really need to use this reciprocal rule here. OK, but that kind of requires us to, to know the AMGM inequality. And maybe you don't know about it. Maybe you've not heard of it before. Maybe you can't quite remember what it is. Um, and the fact that they've given us this bit of information as well suggests that the intended solution may require us to use this. And in fact, there's an alternative solution that we can do as well, which I'll propose now. So the second solution is more using a cubic function and Vieta's formulae. I can see here that we have the product of the, the three numbers, and here I have the sum of the three numbers. And this may make you think of Vieta's formulae. And in fact, now we are going to use this fact here. So let me just actually rewrite this, uh, just making a common denominator here. This is AB plus BC plus CA over ABC. But since ABC is just one, this is AB plus BC plus CA, uh, and that equals a three. OK, now what I'm going to do is consider this function f of x. And f of x is going to be a cubic. It's going to be x minus a times x minus b times x minus c, like so. And for the time being, we don't know what a, b, and c are. Now, if we expand this, um, so you can verify this for yourself, or if you've seen the Etta's formula before, you'll know what this is. But this is going to be x cubed minus a plus b plus c uh, x squared plus a, b plus b, c plus c, a, x minus abc. So if you just expand the brackets there, you get this cubic here. OK, but we know what a plus b plus c is. That's just 3. So this is x cubed minus 3x squared. ab plus bc plus ca. Well, we've just worked out that that's 3 as well. So that's going to be plus 3x. And then minus abc, that's minus 1. And so now we get the f of x and described is just x cubed minus 3x squared plus 3x minus 1. But very conveniently, that's just x minus 1 cubed. And so we get that f of x must be x minus 1 cubed. But f of x was the product of these three factors. And we've also shown that it's the product of x minus 1 times x minus 1 times x minus 1. And so therefore, we can just kind of compare the, the coefficients or, or however you want to do this. You could maybe proceed by showing, you know, talking about the fact that 
roots of a of a cubic are unique up to a scaling, whatever. Anyway, you can get the a equals one, b equals one, and c equals one, and you get the same as before. Um, so these are two ways to solve this problem. Uh, perhaps there are other ways to do it as well. I reckon you can use like the harmonic mean and think about something like that. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not too sure off the top of my head. Um, but we will finish the video there. Let me know in the comments down below if you can think of any other solutions to this. And uh, do let me know if you want to see some more problems from this problem set. I quite enjoy them. Uh, thanks so much for watching. If you have got interviews, good luck with them. And I'll catch you in the next one.